Hello, this is Jim, W4JBM. I wanted to do a video talking about three things today and uh, try to make it uh, quick. First, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the, the source I use for a lot of, a lot of parts uh, that I need, the, just the little odds and ends that are on the bench, uh, is a company called BG Micro. Um, that's out of the, the Dallas area. Um, they're great. The prices are reasonable. Um, they ship quickly, and uh, the, the shipping is always reasonable. I mean, it you know, might charge you 5 to $7 for uh, priority mail. The last time I ordered some stuff, um, it was there were there were a couple of oddball things that uh, took some some extra size, and when I got the box, there were actually two of these boxes in it, um, and this is from, uh, E Elk Hotel. Um, it says uh, PAOF kit. It's got a part number. It says five each. <clears throat> I looked and compared the. Uh, the order that I placed and the bill of material of what was in the box, and this was nowhere on there. And, and as far as I can figure, they just had some extra space in the box, and these things were sitting around, and they were cheaper than packing peanuts. Uh, so I got two boxes of these. When I open them up, what the upgrade kit is, is a, uh, a set of uh, EEPROMs, and Alcatel made uh, pay telephones, so apparently this was, was something to do with, uh, with a pay telephone. <coughs> and each upgrade kit includes... Um, two uh, 2764 EEPROMs, uh, which are 8K of memory, and then there's a uh, 27C010 EEPROM that's on this uh, adapter that I believe, probably, it looks like to me, has some kind of uh, uh, page mapping scheme going where they've used a larger EEPROM uh, in terms of memory, and they're mapping it into the address space of a smaller EEPROM. Uh, there's a couple of chips underneath this. <coughs> Uh, to, to help achieve all that mapping. Um, but anyway, I got that for, for free, uh, in effect, because, like I said, I think they were just cheaper than uh, packing peanuts. Uh, so, BG Micro is a great place, um, and I definitely will continue to use, uh, use them. So I got the EEPROMs, and this is my Easy EP um, EEPROM programmer from M Squared L Electronics. I got this back, it would have been probably 1997, 1998. Uh, so I've had it for almost uh, 20 years now, and uh, have always been happy with it. And one of the things I, I almost always do with EEPROMs, uh, if I'm going to erase them and use them again, um, is just offload whatever's on here and store it in a binary <laughs> image file. And, uh, you know, the chances of, of really needing this ever again are probably... Uh, nil, but uh, it's just a, a habit I have. Uh, I hate to destroy whatever is on this in terms of the programming uh, and information and not be able to recover it some way. Um, someday somebody may, may need that for some reason. So when I hooked it up to, or hooked the Easy EP up, this hooks up to a parallel port uh, through an adapter cable of a uh, DOS PC. And I've got a DOS PC sitting around uh, the shack because uh, there's a couple other pieces of test equipment that I've got that use parallel port interfaces or need a real serial port. Um, so I've got that. I was running this. Uh, when I tried to read what was on this though, um, I got a, uh, an error message saying that um, there was an overcurrent condition. And uh, I'd never seen that before. I've used this uh, for 20 years. I haven't used this in the last five, six, seven, eight years, but uh, it's been a little while. But, um, you know, it, it, I'd never seen that message before. Um, I tried it on the uh, uh, I pulled the, one of the uh, 27C010s off of this, uh, the carrier that they're on, and tried it. It was able to read it perfectly, so I knew that the Easy EP was still working good. Uh, it wasn't a problem with that. But I really kind of struggled with trying to figure out what was going on. <clears throat> I read on a couple of forums where other people had had issues with uh, both the EZEP and the 2764 chips and were, were talking about different things they'd seen. Um, did a lot, of, a lot of digging, a lot of research, and, and I think I finally figured out what was going on. Um, so this, it's got a one amp fuse in it, but I, it, it probably doesn't supply anywhere near that uh, to the chip. And when I got to looking at the 2764 with, with uh, I believe with all EEPROMs, but, but definitely with the older uh, pre-CMOS EEPROMs, the larger they are, the more current they tend to draw. And uh, so I just took this one up to the bench supply and powered it up. Uh, it was drawing about 0.26 amps at 5 volts. Um, so this is putting out over a watt of, uh, of heat and uh, you know, it's uh, 
0.26 amps is, is pretty healthy uh, amount of current. To put that into some kind of context, so what I was going to use this for uh, was to put a, uh, th this is my ELF membership card, 1802 microprocessor. This has right now uh, 16K of EEPROM in it and 32K of RAM and the microprocessor and, and the LEDs and this tends to draw uh, definitely under uh, 0.1 amps, uh, usually around 50 or 60 uh, milliamps. Um, so this is drawing four or five times as much power for just the memory chip. Um, so that made me do some thinking. Well, actually, first off, I, I was I'm, I do tend to be cheap, so I was still trying to figure out if there was some way I could salvage these. I thought about uh, putting another power supply in parallel um, with the EZP or something like that to uh, to try and. Uh, powered up uh, separate from the EZEP uh, for at least just the bulk of the power that's going to the chip, but still have the EZEP, EZ, EZEP do its thing in terms of reading and writing the, uh, the EEPROMs. But the more I thought about that, <coughs> I would have been risking damaging uh, the EZEP, and um, you know this thing is drawing so much power that uh, to put it in uh, this little gizmo, I mean, this thing can operate off of uh, three AA batteries for uh, for a reasonable period. That would not be the case if, uh, if I put in a high power consumption EEPROM. So basically what I decided is that probably the, the EEPROMs I got, they probably were right at uh, BG uh, Electronics and, or BG Micro and uh, that uh, for the most part uh, the, this, the stuff was cheaper than packing peanuts. Um, I do think the, the 27C10s, uh, I may be able to get some use out of. I may be able to do something with this page mapping scheme. I, I want to reverse engineer that and try and figure out what's going on there. Uh, so an interesting little project um, for another day. Um, but really, um, that was what I wanted to talk about, the, the, the three things there. Um, so the uh, uh, BG Micro uh, is a great great place to get uh, parts from. The EZEP is a great little EEPROM programmer. It's no longer available. Uh, they've been out of business for a couple of years now. Um, I did look at the, and I've seen it when I was doing research, uh, I come across a couple posts of people saying they bought one at a flea market or online, didn't have the software. Uh, the software does say that uh, it is copyrighted, but it is free. And it says that you can share it um, because it's just basically a demo version if you don't have the programmer and the proper cable. Um, so if anybody has one of these and needs the uh, the software to operate it. Uh, it is DOS-based software, and that's it's got to have direct access to the parallel port. Um, but if you need it, uh, drop me a note. So, uh, you know, second thing, I like the EZP. Feel like it was a great buy. I've been happy with it for 20 years now. Um, the third thing is the the EEPROMs. As you look at some of these older EEPROMs and the power they drew, uh, current requirements, uh, they probably are just for. For modern projects, uh, it's just not, uh, it's really not worth it. Um, I could save, you know, I can go and buy poles of uh, like the 2764s, uh, 27C64, so the CMOS version. I could probably get those for uh, between 50 cents and maybe $2. Um, I can get new um, 27C128s, uh, which are 32K uh, EEPROMs for around four or five dollars um, and that's not even in any kind of big quality quantity um, and not not any particularly good pricing um, so bottom line is that i really think that these older eproms are uh, uh, kind of worthless now i have seen some people uh, talk about that they've got um, uh, they've, when they've hooked it up to their EEPROM programmers and, and the 2764s is the one that I've seen this mentioned on that when they read it they get all FDs and they can't seem to program it even if they erase it. So I think what's happening there the way EEPROM chips are uh, kind of historically designed uh, pin, pin 1 is at the bottom here but as long as I put this into the socket starting at the top um, even if it's 24, 28 or 32 pins uh, the power, power supply um, lines up and, and, and knows what to do um, as long as I've got the proper chip configured in the software for the EZEP. Um, but if I put this in wrong, if I put this in all the way at the bottom instead of all the way at the top, um, then I actually, when I read it, I get the FDs also without the overcurrent message. And that's just, uh, you know, this thing, there's not a lot of intelligence built into this. This puts uh, signals onto the address lines. As long as it doesn't get an overcurrent condition, uh, then it's just going to read the, uh, what's, what it's coming off of, what it thinks are the data lines. And um, something like FD just means that uh, all the bits are set except for uh, 
uh, bit one, uh, bit zero is set, bit one isn't, and then all the others up to bit seven if you start counting at zero, uh, which is something that uh, one of those habits that uh, computer engineers have. But uh, basically, the the second bit, uh, if, if you were just counting from uh, from the least significant digit up uh, or least significant bit up to the most significant bit, um, so uh, to me, this is. Uh, you know, this this EEPROM is probably just going to go uh, probably go into a stack someplace and take up room, but uh, I can't see it really using it in the project. So BG Micro is great. Uh, Easy EP Programmer is a nice programmer, and I can help you out if you've got uh, got issues with not having the software. And uh, if you got some of these old EEPROMs laying around, um, you may have trouble programming them with a uh, I think a modern EEPROM program or something that's USB powered is going to have even more problems than this older ECEP would. Uh, you may not be able to read them which could be problematic if you're trying to get whatever's on it off uh, but you're probably not going to be able to write them either. Um, so you're going to have to do some thinking about about how you might uh, might handle that and uh, you know, for me, it's just not, uh, like I said, it's not worth it. These, these don't have anything on them I need. Uh, I can buy uh, 27C64s at a reasonable price, not risk damaging my, uh, my program or anything else. And uh, that's probably the route that I'll, I'll be going down. Um, so anyway, I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed it. And uh, likes and subscribes are always appreciated. And like always, uh, have a great day.